Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to get started with the styling of the main header. Now first let's jump, let's take a look at our final design and now we are going to jump into our CSS. So we have some sort of layouting system for our different containers. We know that they're all layout horizontally and we know what we can use to actually do that. Now, the first thing that I'm going to get rid of in this uh, main header is this height, this fixed height. This is possibly the worst thing that you can do to yourself to make your websites not become responsive at all. We are going to change the background color to color primary. This is the color of the background for our section. Let's take a look at that. So here we are. This is our section. So let's go ahead and let's adjust that. Now, first things first, I'm going to say display flex. And this is going to align all the items horizontally. When I save it, we can see that all of them are aligned horizontally. Uh, here is the sign up and sign in. And then I'm going to say justify content. What I want to do is I want to provide some space between the different child elements or flex elements. So I'm going to say space between. Now from here on, when we go to CSS, it's a highly, highly subjective idea. It's a highly subject, subjective uh, approach because uh, you might want your content to be justified evenly. Someone else might want their content to be justified in the center. I want my content to be justified between. The space has to be justified between the content. Someone else might want to do something else. So it is very, very relative. It's not fixed. You don't have to abide by my rules. Of course, when you're getting started, you need to just have a frame of reference and you can use my frame of re reference and that's why you're watching my videos but as you progress as you move forward you're going to come up with your own kind of style of writing CSS uh, styles so don't worry about that it is going to come to you just you, the only thing you need to focus on is just go ahead and create websites i want my items to be aligned uh, uh, vertically in the center that's why I'm saying I want my items. I'm not saying that you have to do this. This is something that I do. And you're going to come up with your own style. Don't worry about it. Now, we are going to use position relative. We have talked about that. We have talked about how position relative is no longer used for. You could do that, but it is not used for moving elements. It's used as a frame of reference for any upcoming element, child element, that is going to have position absolute. So you, when you see position relative, immediately you have to know, okay, there is some way along the way, uh, there is going to be a child element that is going to have position absolute because we want to position it absolutely. Perfect. So let's move forward with this. Let's save everything. And we can see that all of them are actually separated. So these are, there is some space between them. Don't worry, we're going to fix the, um, their size as well. Now, I'm going to first grab the H2, and that is located within main dash header underscore underscore logo, and then we have the H2. Okay, so let's take a look at that in HTML as well, because this is your first website, and we want to make we want to make sure that we you understand everything. So this is the class, and then we select from this class the child which is H2. Now, this space, in fact, it is a descendant selector. We didn't talk about a whole group of selectors. That was the adjacent selector, adjacent siblings, uh, adjacent selector, descendant selector, um, um, sibling selector, general sibling selector. So this space is actually the descendant selector. This is used whenever you want to select the descendant or child of any element. So H2 is a descendant of this logo, this, this class. That's why we are saying this uh, space. You remember in our, uh, where was it? In the UL, when we used that greater angle bracket, it was the, that was the, actually, there was the direct child selector. If you say that, then it is just going to grab direct children. We are going to probably cover that in some of our projects in either one of our projects and if we didn't don't worry there is a lot more content coming to youtube so you don't really have to worry about that it is going to be covered somewhere so i'm going to say the font size is going to be three rem we have talked about these properties so i'm just going to 
gloss over them and we are going to say the cool not color is going to be let's use our custom properties so it is going to be the color quaternary and the font family for this one i'm going to set it to uh, the main font family so i'm going to say var font family uh, font family main let's save that let's come in here there we go now you can see it's a little bit bigger the only thing remaining here is you're actually styling this span so the span is also a, a descendant of this class so without spending more time i'm just going to select that uh, by copy pasting and i'm going to say color basically the color is different and you might have guessed it the color is color secondary now you know how you can style different sections of a, um, a single word now what i could do is i could also get rid of these uh, container container lines and i'm just so you can see uh, the actual website because we're done with the entire layout of the website now let's go ahead and let's grab this part the nav part and let's style that and what i'm going to do is i'm going to come down here i'm going to say main dash header underscore underscore nav we forgot the dot let's put in the dot and i'm going to say okay the width of the nav i'm just going to provide it a relative width the width width of the nav has to be 80 percent of its container the z index is going to be one now the z index is a property that we have not talked about and uh, i'm going to tell you what it is in just a sec so display i'm going to say flex and i'm going to say justify content space between so i want them to be stretched further apart let's save that let's take a look so this links the, these links are here and the rest of the content is it right there now z index it provides you with the ability to actually uh, um, control the stacking order of elements on top of each other so if there are two elements or three elements stacked on top of each other uh, in, in your web page using the z index you can actually select which element should be shown on top which element can be shown in the middle and which one should be shown last beneath all the other elements the higher the z index the element is going to be closer to the screen that's why it's called z index because z in index or the z axis in css is actually this axis this imaginary axis so i can show you show it to you it's the imaginary ac axis starting from your eyes it's going towards the screen or some some people say it start it comes out of the screen towards your eyes either way uh it is this axis so the screen is flat it's 2d it has x and y we have talked about them but the z is the stacking order vertical it's it's not vertical it's not horizontal it's the other dimension the z dimension because it, the screen is 2d it's a little bit difficult to explain this just think of a, an imaginary line or you could grab a, a string and pull it by its uh, grab it by its two ends and keep one end towards uh, like close to your one of your eyes or both of your eyes and stretch the other one towards the screen you're going to end up with this z index and that line that line the string line that is going to or a thread in this case a website thread that thread that line is going to show you where the z index is it's an imaginary that's why when elements they sit on top of each other it's the z index that controls which elements has to be shown now why do we need it here is because when we go and make our website smaller okay let's uh let's go to 798 when we make our website smaller you can see that how this uh navigation it is on top of this uh, hero section it's on top of the features on top of the diversify on top of this uh the testimonials on top of the footer so it isn't even though there are this is one element the background is the other element then we have another element beneath it so there are multiple elements on top of each other but the the closer to your eyes is going to be this this menu that you have right here so this is how we can control the z index of any web page okay 
So I'm just going to set it to Z index 1. Let's jump in here. Now all these elements are right here. The rest of them are separated. Now it looks like they're in three different containers. So this is one container, this is the second, and this one is the third. Now with this, our lecture comes to an end. See you in the next one.